It's the depth of flavour that I'm looking for. I'm also looking for flavours that make you go, wow. As a two Michelin star chef, I have always pursued excellence in my kitchens. Now the level of craftsmanship that goes into the Balvenie whiskey has caught my eye, and I want to unlock its mysteries. I'm going to spend a week at the Balvenie distillery in Scotland to meet the craftspeople working to make this unique single malt. My challenge is to create a special dinner inspired by their crafts. But will they appreciate my work as much as I do theirs? I'm Michel Roux, Jr., and I'm here to create the Craftsman's Dinner. You should stay true to your roots. My philosophy and my cuisine is based on the classics, on classic technique, um, and I think the Balvini is still uh, recognizable as its own style, it has its own character. I mean, these barrels are alive. They're now asleep, dormant, hibernating. They go to the cooperage, they're going to be given a new life, and then filled with wonderful spirit. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to close a barrel myself. It would be great to have a taste and see what it had become. I'm meeting Kelsey. She's a whiskey stocks technologist here at the Balvenie. And she's going to help me find my barrel. Sounds good. I, I love that sound. It is so good. Cool. Thank you. It's lovely. Really sweet vanilla coconut notes coming off. You've picked a good barrel. <laughs> so technically, this isn't even a whiskey yet. No, it won't be a whiskey for about another six months. So at the moment it's two and a half years old. In Scotch, legally, it has to be at least three years. But if we're using anything for Bovenie, we'll allow it to sleep in the warehouse for a few more years before we use it. Each barrel is unique like mine because of the wood being alive. Flavours develop over time, so the whiskey in the barrels get sampled on a regular basis. So typically when we talk about Boveni, we talk about that malted barley sweetness. Mm. We really want to capture it in our new make spirit. Because the slightest bit of difference now will make a huge difference at the end. Absolutely. If we, at the point of filling, we don't have that cereal sweetness, it's unfortunate, but we might not actually get those, those real notes yeah. out of the other side. So if you think of all the flavours that we create, we're constantly focusing on the ones that we want to pull out mm. for Boveni. It's, it's a really, really fascinating subject. And what I picked up from you is, as well, the fact that you're tasting at all the stages. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying to my chefs, taste, taste, and taste again. Yeah. Even when they're making something as simple as a sauce, mm -hmm. to taste it at the very beginning, taste it after a few minutes when it's been boiling, and then taste it when you think it's ready. Yeah and then taste it again just before you serve it to the customer. And at every stage, it will taste different. So it, it's so, so important. Oh, I know. It, it amazes me that there's, there are actually so many similarities in the way that we go about blending versus the way that you create a new dish or individual ingredients, because for us, it's so important that we are constantly sampling. Things can change for us. And when we say a month, obviously a lot of people that sounds like a really long time, mm. but when we think about the fact that in whiskey, nothing happens overnight and the differences that we can pick up in the cask in that short space of time are amazing. And so it, it kind of proves the point that if you've got a great ingredient, let that shine and only embellish it 
Don't, don't hide it, don't yeah. mask it. It's from the conversation between the spirit and the wood that unique flavors emerge. Unlocking flavor and aroma is at the heart of great cooking. So this is where we store our empty barrels that one day we'll fill with bovening of some kind. Recondition them, put them together so they're nice and tight, ready for filling with boveni. Ready for another life, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Oh, wow. And this has still got the charring on the inside. Mm. Look at that. I think there's loads of flavour trapped in here. Mm. You can see where the bourbon has seeped into the, into the wood and, of course, there's flavour here as well. Mm. If I can release that and see if I can unleash some flavour into the main course. Do you mind if I take a couple? No, when you go. I think this wood has got flavours trapped in it from all these years of having bourbon and then whiskey. It's just catching that, that flavour that's trapped in there. something magical about that. Mm. 